Back in 2016, Goodyear published some information about their concept future tyre design, which is a ball. Apparently it would use magnetic levitation to attach it to the car, although it's hard to say how well this would work, and how well things like braking would work. Ball wheels would have several advantages, such as allowing the car to move in any direction to make manoeuvrability easier, and allowing the tyres to be reoriented to spread the wear evenly over the surface. But how practical would it be to have wheels that are actually balls? There are various ways to put ball wheels on a vehicle or robot, the most practical is to use omni wheels to drive the ball like I did with my ball balancing robot, and there are various other examples of this on YouTube. The omni wheels are a wheel with smaller wheels all around the outside so they can slide sideways. You could of course just put omni wheels or mechanum wheels on the vehicle though, and there are also many examples of this. If things get sketchy when driving, I think I'd rather have my car wheels properly attached to the car. So I did some more research and found a video about a ball wheel concept from Osaka University. This research group has developed a ball wheel attached to an axle and also used it to drive treads to make an omni tank style robot. The design looks like it's just two hemispheres, which can both rotate freely and independently, attached to an axle which would be driven by a motor. So I put together my own version, which is two 3D printed hemispheres on a 3D printed axle, and it's just got a bolt going through the middle so that they rotate. I'm going to put some marks on each side so we can see that they rotate independently. So we can see that rotates in that orientation, and the axle can drive it in the other orientation. So that should make an omni wheel that should work pretty well. But what happens if we try and drive in this orientation and rotate the wheel? Well, it actually keeps driving surprisingly well as we get to a smaller and smaller circumference on the hemisphere. Until we get to the point where the axis is completely vertical, and then of course the balls won't run at all. Now I do have a hole in each hemisphere on the end of the axis, which is where my bolt head is, but even if it were a complete sphere, it still wouldn't run well with the axis in that orientation. Obviously it works well in the other orientation, but this is a bit of a problem if we're going to make an omni wheel. So let's check back on that video. Yep, we've definitely got our hemispheres which rotate independently, and they're fixed to the axle in the same way. But what's that on the end of the axis? Yep, it's a wheel. So let's imagine I've got a wheel attached to each hemisphere, and I've just put a bit of blue tape on now to show the orientation of the wheel. So obviously that wheel is going to have to be oriented with the axle so that it actually runs in the right direction. Because as those hemispheres rotate, the wheel will get misoriented and then it wouldn't run in the right direction anymore. So we have to basically make sure that the wheel is attached to the axle and the hemisphere rotates around it. But before we look at that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay provide both PCB manufacture and PCB assembly under the same roof, so you can get them to solder the components onto your PCB as well as make the board, and they'll do surface mount and through hole assembly. PCBWay have also launched new CNC services including online CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and injection moulding. PCBWay CNC machining services include a wide range of materials including aluminium, stainless steel and various plastics. If you don't see the material you like, you can also choose from custom materials. Check out the PCBWay website to browse through a variety of finishes and get a quote. PCBWay manufacture all sorts of boards including standard fibreglass PCBs, but also aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. Prices start at $5 for 10 standard PCBs and $30 for 10 PCBs with assembly, but new customers can get $5 credit so you can get 10 PCBs for free the first time you order. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I'll put that link in the description to this video. So here's my new design. I've got two hemispheres which are again attached to an axle, and I've got that wheel which is attached to the axis they rotate on. And those wheels are attached to the axle so they always stay oriented and run in that direction, with the hemispheres rotating around them.
Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printed projects and check out 3dfuel.com. The key part of this is what I'm now calling the perpendicular axle, which has that wheel on which is made of TPU, and of course that will be oriented with the main axle, so that wheel always drives in one direction. My two hemispheres have bearings inserted in them, a pair of bearings. These aren't the most slimline bearings I could have bought, but they were the cheapest, which is why they're quite chunky. And those just push fit into the back and front, a bit like a skateboard wheel. That of course slots over the perpendicular axle, and there'll be a pair of these to make up the whole ball wheel. And as you can see, that leaves the little wheel oriented in the same orientation, no matter what happens to the hemisphere. I'm just using M8 studding as the main axle, and I've done two pairs of hex nuts up against each other, and that means they won't slip, and I can use those as a keyway. And those fit neatly into the perpendicular axle, a pair of those perpendicular axles get screwed together, and that means that shaft is nicely fixed, provided the hex nuts don't come undone. Which they shouldn't, because I did them up really tight. That'll allow us to drive the axle in the future. I used contact adhesive to glue the TPU treads into the two hemispheres. I did allow screw holes, but for now I'm going to rely on the glue, and hopefully that should hold it. But we can always come back and put a lot of screws in if they get detached in use. And those hemispheres fit on either side of my perpendicular axle, allowing the main axle to stay oriented with the little wheels. Two retainer clips hold the hemispheres on, and this really could have been designed so that they clipped into a recess. Unfortunately I didn't design it like that, and as well as printing two of them, I've actually printed six as you'll see later in the video. So for now, they just clip on on the build lines, and then unfortunately we have to glue them on with super glue. But this is one design change to actually have them removable, since they're a ring that would be quite springy anyway. If they clipped into a recess, that would allow disassembly at a later date. On top of that is another TPU piece which is attached to the hemispheres that of course rotate around those retainer clips and around the little wheel. And these make up the contour of the ball with those raised treads, so that we can transition smoothly to running on the little wheel rather than on the edge of the hemisphere. There is one disadvantage, which is that those are quite flexible, so I might reprint them in something more rigid so they don't bind on that retainer, but we'll see how it goes for now. So let's see how well it runs. I need to hold that axle perfectly parallel with the table. Most of the time it would run anyway, apart from when we run on that little wheel. Of course there isn't much clearance around the other TPU piece where the wheel sticks out, and if I don't hold the axle perfectly parallel, then the TPU ring binds on the table. So that's one disadvantage of this design. I guess it's not much worse than an Omni wheel with lots of small wheels around the outside, and the probability of actually driving on that little wheel is much less than with an Omni wheel where they're everywhere. But that seems to run okay in all directions, and you can see those hemispheres spinning right up to the point until I tip it onto the wheel, and then the wheel runs and the hemisphere stops spinning. But that seems to move pretty freely. But what about if it was a robot or a vehicle with more than one? And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I've actually printed everything three times or six times, depending on how you look at it, and now I've attached them to this frame with skate bearings so they rotate really freely on their axles. So that seems to move incredibly freely, I'm really happy with the way this has actually turned out. Obviously there's some lumps and bumps between the gaps between the two hemispheres, and the gaps between the treads, but it seems to run okay. So let's try and force it to run on that wheel and see how it goes. And that seems to run okay, you can see the transition between the hemisphere and the little wheel on the end, but overall that feels incredibly smooth. It does feel like sometimes that TPU ring around the wheel is actually compressing and binding on that retaining clip, so we probably need to print that in something more rigid, but the probability of actually hitting it is pretty low when you drive with an Omni robot. So that's one improvement to make, but overall it just seems to glide around and works really smoothly, so I'm pretty happy with the results. I'm pretty surprised that's turned out so well, and it just seems to glide really smoothly that I'm really happy with. Thanks to Osaka University, of course, for the design concept. I'm not sure if I want to drive a car with wheels like this, but it's pretty good for an Omni robot. I really like the way it looks as well with those balls for wheels. So next time, I'm going to try and put motors on and try and drive it around and maybe turn it into a robot that can navigate and map its environment autonomously. We'll see how that goes. So don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more on this project and lots of other projects. 
I'm going to publish the CAD for this as well, if you want to have a go at building one, or building something similar, and most of the stuff I do is open source. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description to this video as well, and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, and sneak peeks of pictures of what's coming up so you can be involved in all of that discussion. Alright, that's all for now.